Welcome to my small workshop. Today I'm going to make a small modification to the MiG 200D3 welder. It's not prepared for powering a MiG gun from the factory, but I'm going to do something about that. It's not as complicated as it might sound. I got this spool gun from a local seller, but you can get them from eBay or Amazon. Just search for spool gun and a lot of different models and different price ranges will come up. It comes with an English manual and some extra contact tips for 0.8 and 1mm wire. The gun is made of thin plastic. It's not the most sturdy thing in the world, but I guess it will be fine for my use. It comes with a standard EU socket, so it fits directly to the machine. The two small pins are for the trigger switch, and the pin with the hole is for the shielding gas. The small connector here is power supply for the wire feed motor and the gun. This is the one we need to power from the machine. First I'm going to remove the cover from the machine. Please make sure to turn off the power before you do such a thing. I locate the two wires that supply the wire feed motor from the PCB. and give them a cut. I remove a little bit of the wire insulation so I can attach my voltmeter. I measure the voltage while pressing the trigger on the mic gun and turning the knob for wire feed speed from minimum to maximum. It goes up to about 10 volts. The spool gun is rated for 12 volts, so this should be fine. When I press the red button for fast wire feed speed, the voltage goes all the way up to 23 volts. So I need to keep my greasy fingers from that button as long as the spool gun is attached. This is a 4-pin male microphone connector. You can get them in electronic stores or on eBay. Make sure to get one for fitting in a cabinet. As I write here in the manual, it's pin number 3 and 4 we need to connect. This is an ordinary three-way toggle switch. You can get them everywhere. I solder the wire to the connectors and protect them with a little bit of string tubing. And then I drill holes for the connector and the switch in the cabinet. Make sure to protect all the electronics with a cloth or something while doing so. And then I fit the switch and the connector socket in place. And then I assembly the wires. There are many ways to do this. I use a mix of crimp and screw connectors. how the schematic looks. As you can see the wire feed motor and the machine 
and the spool gun share the same negative connection at all times. And by pressing the switch, you change the positive supply between the spool gun and the wire feed motor. This is how it looks in the machine. This is a positive connection to the switch. This red supplies the connector for the spool gun. Blue and later red wire supplies the wire feed motor and the machine. And the black one is the negative connection for both the wire feed motor and the circuit for the spool gun. that came with the machine and I flipped the switch to supply the wire feed motor inside the machine and apparently I was lucky it still works I'm loading a one millimeter aluminium wire into the spool gun the spool gun and flip the switch. And it works great. I can adjust the wire feed speed with the knob on the machine as expected. Let's try it out. Here I'm welding some 5mm aluminium. This is 10 millimeter. some of the welds I made while testing this new spool gun. I'm very happy about how this turned out. It's really easy to use. Of course it's a bit more bulky than a normal big gun, 
but the wire feed is smooth and the welding arc is very, very stable. And there's no problem with the wire curling up inside the machine that makes bird nests. I'm sure this is going to be my preferred method for MIG welding aluminium in the future. So I can highly recommend a spool gun. I hope you found at least some of the information in this video useful. I think my next video will be about my TIG welder or maybe my plasma cutter. I haven't decided yet. But until then, thank you for watching.